In this video, we'll discuss homogeneous linear systems. Our main goal at this point is, given a system of linear equations involving some number of variables, we want to be able to answer the question of which vectors are solutions to that system, and how we can best describe those solution sets, rather than providing a list, which would be impossible because very often, as we've seen, these solution sets are infinite, we want to try to find a good way to describe all of the vectors that solve a linear system. And once we do that, we'll call that the solution set of those vectors. Now, it turns out a useful tool for describing these solution sets is to first talk about what's called homogeneous linear systems. Not every system of linear equations will be homogeneous, but as we'll see, if we can solve the homogeneous system, then we'll be able to better describe the solutions to non-homogeneous systems, which we'll talk about in the next lecture. So what does it mean for a system of linear equations to be homogeneous? All that means is that it can be written in the form ax equals zero for some matrix A. Now remember, we know that every linear system can be written in the form ax equals b, and so this just means that the b vector is the zero vector. Now, the word homogeneous here just means all of the same kind. And so what that's trying to describe here is that all of the equations of our linear system are going to have a zero on the right-hand side. So they're all the same type of equation in the sense that they're all set equal to zero. So here's an example. So here's a system of linear equations, and it's homogeneous because all of these right-hand side numbers are all zeros. Now we can write that in the form ax equals zero, where our matrix A is again just the coefficients in the normal way that we do this. So just to emphasize, make sure we all know where this is coming from, we've got 1x1, 1x1, and 0x1, and so that's why our first column is 1, 1, 0. For x2 we have 1x2, 0x2, and 2x2, and that's why our second column is 1, 0, 2, and so on. Now if we look carefully at this system of linear equations, because all of the right-hand side numbers are zeros, one nice feature of homogeneous systems is that the zero vector is always going to be a solution. If we plug in zero for all of the variables, then of course we will get zero on the right-hand side. And so that's just a feature of homogeneous linear systems is that the zero vector is always going to be a solution. So here's the real question though, are there any other solutions? And if so, what are they? Well, the way we're going to answer that question is the way that we've been doing all along. We're going to form the augmented matrix and row reduce. So again, I'm saving you the trouble here, but this is going to be the row reduction process that we've been talking about. And here's our reduced row echelon form. And we can take that row reduced augmented matrix and write it in terms of the variables. So all we're doing there is taking each row of that matrix and writing it as an equation. So in the first row, I have 1x1, 0x2s, negative 9x3s, and 0x4s. And so I just write that in the equation form as x1 minus 9x3 equals 0. Now, x3 here is a free variable because there's no pivot in that x3 column. And so we write that simply using the words x3 is free. Now we're going to do something a little bit different than we've done in the past. Because what we want to know are which vectors are solutions to the system of linear equations, we want to write our solution in vector form. So here are the equations that we have from the previous step, and what we want to do is solve each of those equations for the basic variables. So x1, x2, and x4 are our basic variables. Those are the variables corresponding to the columns where we had pivots. And so x1 minus 9x3 equals 0. I'm going to solve that for x1 and write it as x1 equals 9x3. Similarly, I'll write x2 equals negative 3x3. Now, what do I do with a free variable? Well, let's just write that as x3 equals x3. It's not really saying much, but it's just going to help us in the next step. And then x4 equals 0. So now when I want to write this as a vector equation, so I've got x1 through x4 here, and so I'm just going to put those together into a vector. And now what I will also want to do is write the solution as a vector. So 9x3, negative 3x3, x3, and 0, I can think of as x3 times the vector, 9, negative 3, 1, 0. And so in other words, the solution set is simply all multiples of that single variable, which is, as we've seen, a span. And so we can write the solution set as the span of that vector, the span of 9, negative 3, 1, 0. If we had had more free variables, we would have more vectors to write down for our span. 
So in general, we're always going to be able to write the solution set of a homogeneous system as the span of some number of vectors. There's going to be one vector for each free variable, and if there happen to be no free variables, then that zero vector, the thing that's always going to be a solution, in fact, that'll turn out to be the only solution. And so the zero vector all by itself, only that one vector, which can be thought of as the span of just the zero vector. Remember, as we've seen, the span of a single vector is just all multiples of that vector. But if you multiply the zero vector by any scalar, you just get the zero vector. So span of the zero vector, that's all multiples of the zero vector, but all of those multiples are really boring, they just give you back the zero vector. One nice application of this is that it gives us a different way to describe equations of planes in three dimensions. So as you may know, in R3, a plane can be described by a linear equation which we can put into the form ax plus by plus cz equals d. And when d equals zero, that just means that the plane goes through the origin, and we can describe the plane in a different way. Rather than with that one single equation, which can be useful for certain things, we're going to find a different way to describe it. So just as an example, let's look at the plane x minus 3y plus 4z equals zero. We're going to think of that single equation as actually being a system, quote unquote, system of linear equations with only one equation. And so we're going to solve that in the normal way, although it's going to seem a little weird because we only have the one equation. But the corresponding augmented matrix has one row because we only have one equation, 1, negative 3, 4, 0. That's already in reduced echelon form, so we don't have any row reduction to do. And so let's just go ahead and write our solution in the form of the variables. So our one row corresponds to the equation x minus 3y plus 4z equals 0, and y and z are both free variables. Following the same process that we did before, we're going to solve our equation for the basic variable. So we get x equals 3y minus 4z, y equals y, z equals z. So when we write this in vector form, this is actually going to be the span of two vectors. When we write x equals 3y minus 4z, we're going to break that up into 3y and negative 4z. y equals y means we put a 1 in the second spot of the y vector, but we put a 0 in the second spot of the z vector because we don't want to get any z's in that second spot. z equals z means we put a 0 in the, y, the third spot for the y vector because we don't want to get any y's in that third spot. And we put a 1 in the third spot for the z vector because we do want to get a z in that third spot. So those are the two vectors that we get, 3, 1, 0, and negative 4, 0, 1. So that allows us to describe this plane in what we call parametric vector form. So rather than just having this equation that tells us x minus 3y plus 4z equals 0, but it doesn't really, that equation doesn't uh, directly give us any of the points on the plane, this parametric vector form does give us a way to generate lots of points on this plane. We know that all of the points on this plane look like some number times this first vector plus some number times this second vector. And so we can generate lots of locations and points and vectors that all have to live in this plane. So it's re really useful for certain applications, um, specifically surface integrals, um, some other things that we can do with planes by having this alternate uh, description. So where we're going with this is now to look at non-homogeneous systems of linear equations. So how do we use what we just learned about homogeneous systems to find a way to describe the solutions of non-homogeneous systems, where the right-hand side of the equal signs in our system of linear equations might not all be zeros? What do we do then? That's what we'll learn in the next lecture.